Hello there, it's Saturday the 29th of September 2012. This is Chris Reardon welcoming you to today's United, or this week's United Kingdom talk. I've just come back from the doctors, actually, uh, before I recorded this, uh, having a little bit of breathing difficulty over the last ooh, four or five days. And uh, once again, it was it was from when we went to the warm weather to the cold weather, and that kicked it off again. As it often does, um, it's... While I'm sitting here talking to you, it's not too bad. But the moment I start getting up and walking around, it becomes a little bit more difficult. Um, I, I can breathe in and let you listen. Listen to me. Can you hear that or not? Right, I'll do it again. Ready? <laughs> oh, dear, dear. So you can hear that. Now, I do have asthma. And I've uh, got one of these um, little blue things that you're supposed to do, you know, which helps to a point. But it feels like it's deeper inside me. So uh, I rang up the doctors this morning uh, at 8.30 and they said, OK, come along any time between now and 11. We've got a very good doctor here. I must say, the doctor I go to here in Bracknell, um, you ring up and you get an appointment, uh, whatever, the next day. Or if you really need to see someone... <clears throat> As I felt I did, uh, I come down there and then I don't go to, I'm one of those people that goes to the doctors as a last resort, uh, which has incidentally got me into a little bit of trouble a couple of times. But I, I just don't, I, I, I always feel like there's someone else who's more important than me to see. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you must have seen these people go to the doctors. I hope you're not one of them, dear. Uh, they've got a cut finger. Oh, could you look at my finger? Oh, I've cut my, oh, I've got a sore throat. I must go down to doctors and take 10 weeks off, you know, off work. I'm not like that at all. I do leave it sometimes a bit too long. Um, but... If I get something, I tend to wait a week or so to see if it clears up on its own. But I, I've had this before, and I know it wasn't, and I knew what it was going to do. So uh, I went down there, and how fabulous. They have this new calling system in our doctors. Uh, no one comes out and goes, Chris Reardon, could you come in now, please? None of that. Oh, no. Electronic screen, dear. Yes. And um, a little picture comes up. On the uh, on this on this large plasma screen, which is showing various uh, NHS things about flu, this, that, and the other, and your name comes up in I think it was yellow. Let me just have a look. Now I've got a picture of this. Okay, um, <clears throat> let me see where is it now. I think it was a yellow coloured thing. Where is it on my iPhone? My my newly upgraded iPhone. That wasn't without problems, but anyway, it's all sorted now. Let me see if we get this picture. Where is it now? There we are. Uh, and, and, and your name comes up. At last, my name is in lights. Christopher Reardon to Dr. Nicholas Ramscar in R1, which means room one. How exciting is that? A little bleep comes out and a woman, a computerised voice, announces your name. Of course, I had to immediately text this to my ever-friendly uh, best friend, my ever-supporting um, best friend, who texted me back rather quickly. It said He said, uh, very quickly, he, and said, you see, your name is up in lights at last. How wonderful that the whole of the doctor's surgery knows my name. Now, I did put the name on Facebook. I put the photo on Facebook as well. If you want to have a little search through that, uh, uh, my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK, if you want to join me on there. OK, Chris Reardon UK. So facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. You can see the little picture up there. Uh, and a few people commented, perhaps they need to put the ailment up there as well. Sort of Christopher Reardon... Go to room, doctors want for, I don't know, uh, asthma problems. I mean, but you could go in with something personal, dear, you know, and then the entire doctor's surgery would see. We can't have anything like, you know, Chris Redden, please go into doctor's with for hemorrhoid <laughs> or something like that. Oh, no, I don't think that's a good idea at all, putting your ailment up there. Anyway, so I went in to see him, lifted my thing. Oh, we've got a new doctor. Never met him before. Um, younger than me. It's weird, isn't it? Those of you who are a little bit older, like myself, um, when you start seeing people of, uh, shall we say, importance, who are now younger than you, I think our Prime Minister is even younger than me now. I'm sure that's the case. I think it is, you know. So I went in to see him. 
uh, lived in retirement, and he was listening around. He says, well, you haven't got any bacterial infections there. Uh, I don't know how they can tell the difference, really. He said, there's no pneumonia or chest infection or anything like that. He said, you might have a vi viral infection uh, 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 starting up there. He said, so I'm going to give you some steroids. Have you had these before? And I have, actually. This will be the third time I've had these. And it was always the same thing. It's like... Um, asthmatics will understand this. When I have, when, when I'm breathing in, there's not too much difficulty breathing in the first bit, like, okay, which is what the little blue thing tends to clear if there is difficulty, but there isn't. Even though I'm having this, there isn't. It's, it's deeper down when you go, and there it is. <coughs> so, uh, what happens, as on the other two occasions, get some of these little steroids, and they're tiny little tablets, and you have to have, I think, six of them once a day. And they somehow open up those deep down bits and allow your lungs to sort themselves out, and then that's it. So that's what I did. Very nice, doctor. And while I was in there, I did notice a little leaflets all over the place advertising the fact that they're going to have this walk-in flu jab. What they usually do is that when the flu injections become available, they arrange these walk-in clinics, and you you just go down. Oh, my phone's still on. Just a second. Let me turn that off. You just uh, let me put that over there. You just um, go in there, take your place in the queue on a Saturday morning usually, and one by one they call you in. Quick jab in the arm, and out you go again. And he says, "Oh, I'll do. It. I'll save yourself another trip. I'll do that now." And I was able to have my flu injection as well. It's very very important for people with asthma or anything like that. You know, anything that's um, quite serious, perhaps heart defects. Asthma, certain blood conditions. Um, what else did I see on there? Cancer patients, HIV patients, anyone like that. Very important to have a, a, a flu injection. So I had that while I was there. Although last year that didn't work. I don't know if you remember. I actually got flu last year. And I went to the, um, actually my special doctor, who shoved a thing. Oh, it's the most unpleasant thing ever. They shoved this long cotton wool thing. Right up. And you, oh, it's horrible. Horrible. <laughs> and then they take this swab out. They send it off. And I, I caught the flu that this particular injection should have protected against. But uh, that's just one of those things. It happens sometimes and you accept it. But I still think having that flu injection is very important. And, of course, here in the UK, we are very, very lucky to have uh, the NHS. And all this is free. You know, I do feel for... For um, the people... Oh, here comes the cat. Come on, Katie. Do you want to push the door open, darling? Oh, this will be my best friend on the phone. Do excuse me a moment. Good morning. Can I help? Just a minute, Katie wants to come in. Come on, girl. In you come. Come on, girl. Yes? Yes? Uh, yes, what well, I asked her to do, and she did do so, yes. What, now? Without my permission? Well, if you wait, we could both go there and have some of those pasties. Are they fattening? Well, it's all vegetables, dear. Just a tiny little bit of pastry around those pasties. What was you before? Well, how quickly have you managed to do that? 11 stone 2 from 11 stone 7. How, how quickly? Three days. That's not good, dear. You're wasting away. You'll fall down that drain. I am doing a show, yes. They can't hear you or see you. Perhaps that's a good thing. <laughs> um, yes. One o'clock. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Oh, how fabulous. My friend is on his way round because he we're going to Woken and he's going to have his hair cut there. So, so I have my... Oh, you may have noticed, uh, those of you that watch the show, I've had my hair cut. Number one, back and sides. No, sorry, number half, back and sides. And number one on top. Cat, are you coming in, darling, or what? Katie? Aren't they funny? They meow at the door. You open the door and she just sits there and looks. Why don't she come in? Strange. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, the doctor. So I've had the flu injection. 
and I don't have to go back. And shortly after I finish the show, I'm going to drop down my uh, my prescription to the chemist. Oh, actually, I'll take it to Wokenham and get it done in Boots, the chemist there. Uh, get that done there and uh, have those steroid tablets. And hopefully by this time next week, when we have another little chat again, I should be all sorted. That's nothing to worry about. Uh, it's quite... I, 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 how do they know? I mean, obviously, I'm not a doctor. <clears throat> I was wondering... When they put that stethoscope on your chest and he listens, you know, here, 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 and then you turn around and on your back. And he said, it's it's not a bacterial infection. It sounds like the start of a viral. How do they, does it sound different? I wonder if the back, is, oh, you're here then, darling. Hello, do you want to come up? What's up, girl? You don't look very happy at all. What's up? Sorry, the cat's just come in. Come on. You coming up? What she has been doing is jumping up on the shelf uh, next to the mixer. The mixer is a uh, not not a food mix. Well, come on, don't keep moaning, darling. Come up and say hello then. That's it. There she is. Look, she's here, Katie. Oh, what's wrong, girl? I don't know what's wrong with you lately. There you are. You happy now? Yep, purring away now. I know you can't see. Oh, there she goes, walking on the front of the computer and the mixer. Uh, it's the sound mix. She keeps jumping up on the shelf and walking across it and pushing buttons, which is rather annoying. You can't sit up there, darling. There, you go and sit on the printer. She's moved into the she's moved into the studio, the cat. <laughs> which probably isn't really helping with the asthma either, but there we are. We can't get rid of our pussies. We really can't. So that was my trip uh, to the doctors. I still have my steroids later. And uh, Ronnie's coming round as well. And we're going to this uh, little place where they do pasties. Very, very nice pasties, actually. I did mention them. Uh, I think at the beginning of the year, I went in there and uh, I was going to buy two pasties. I, I, they were three pounds each. And I walked out of there in disgust at the thought of paying three pounds for a blooming pasty. But since then, I was very, very hungry once on the way back from uh, the swimming pool, which I try to attend four or five times a week. And um, uh, I had a pasty. Oh, I don't know what? They were di they were properly filled. Do you know what I mean? Nothing worse than getting a pasty, and it's all pastry, is it? Vile, dear, vile. It was properly filled, and it was really nice. So we're going to go there for lunch, I think. Very nice. Someone who's not having pasties at the moment. So uh, there we are. That was my little doctor's visit this morning. I was just so pleased that my name appeared, appeared on that screen in front of me. <clears throat> uh, someone who's not having pasties at the moment is my dear sister, Sharon who has been on a diet for a while. Not only a diet, she's been attending Weight Watchers, boys and girls. Yes, do you go as well? Well, it's worked for her. She's lost, well, she had lost a stone. Unfortunately, this week she's put a pound on, but I told her uh, that that's not to be worried about. Okay, because she knows. I said, do you know how you put it on? She said, yeah, I know. I've been eating, da 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 da, -da. Okay, I said, so that's fine. So you know what happened. You can lose it again and don't worry. And I think, you know, <clears throat> people who are trying to lose weight, <clears throat> if you know someone who's trying to lose weight, encourage it. Say nice things. If they've fallen off the wagon, doesn't matter. Don't start laying into them because it's very, very easy to piss off, uh, actually, that's not the expression, is it? When I upset, that's the word. It's very, because they don't get angry, they get unhappy. It's very, very easy to make someone unhappy who is or even just thinks that they are overweight. Don't dwell on it. Don't keep mentioning, oh, oh and the, the gay crowd is particularly good at this. They are particularly good at mentioning, oh, hello, Chris. Oh, you've been at the pies again and you don't need it. When you feel bad about it, you really don't need it. So when my sister, whenever my sister, and I, I was guilty of that. I've got to tell you, I've been guilty of that over the years, especially when it comes to my sister. In your own mind, you know, you think it's quite funny. OK, to say, oh, hello, sis. Oh, put on some more weight. Of you. So you, for you in your mind. Think, but it's not funny to the other person concerned. And it can be downright hurtful. So if you know someone that's losing weight and they do now and again fall off the wagon, encourage them. Don't say, oh, well, that's it again. You know, you're going to be fat again. Well, after one pound, I don't think so. You know, 
Encourage it. Be nice about it. I've taken it on myself over the last few months to become nice. I am. An <laughs> I'm trying to be nice to everyone. So I'm very impressed. And my sister has almost lost a stone in weight. So I'm very, very impressed in that. And uh, talking of family things, uh, for a couple of days this week, I've been visiting uh, up north uh, because guess what's happened, boys and girls? Da, 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 da. I have become Great Uncle Chris again. The second time this year. Yes, my lovely niece Tracy uh, has had her baby boy. She's had a little boy. So I now have another, well, no, my first great nephew. I already have a great niece in the form of Evie. I've got some pictures, okay? Again, you can see those uh, on my Facebook. Or if you're watching the show, I'm going to put them up now, okay? Um, on my Facebook, my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. You'll be able to find them there. First of all, some pictures of uh, my... Um, uh, my great niece, Evie, who's a few months old now. She is daughter to Gary, who's my nephew, and Stacy, his wife. And uh, they, they are so happy. They are so happy that they have become parents. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for them. Nothing, nothing gives me greater pleasure than seeing happiness on their faces. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you'll understand that. You'll, I know if you're of an age, you will understand that. Um, so that was a couple of months ago. And only on Thursday at one... Was it Thursday? One moment, please. No, Wednesday. It was Wednesday at one seventeen in the afternoon. Tracy, my niece, gave birth to a little boy. And she didn't know it was going to be a little boy. She elected to not know... Uh, anything like that, just had the scan to make sure everything was all right, but she didn't want to know the sex. So she had a little boy, called him George William. Little George has been born and has entered into this world, boys and girls. Now, I hope she won't mind me sharing you this, but she had a little bit of a difficult birth. It was her first one. I think the baby was, I don't think it was upside down, sort of, I... I no, I don't think it was upside down, but it was head first, but it was round the wrong way. I think they called it back to back. Does that sound about right? I'm sure she called it back to back. Let me have a little sip of tea here. Oh, lovely cup of tea. Um, so uh, poor old Ben, her husband, went there as well. So they the, the, the baby started to come, I think, or she was pushing and pushing and pushing because she, she went into the hospital about 14 hours before um, that bits and pieces started happening. And uh, <clears throat> she was trying to give birth, and then they realised the head was the wrong way round. I think this is right. The, don't quote me on this exact story, but uh, poor old Ben was in pieces, apparently, uh, because then suddenly, no, right, she's got to go to theatre, and then everyone starts rushing around. And to have someone watch that is a little bit scary, I think. You know, all these doctors and nurses running around then, pushing trolleys quickly to the theatre and all that business. Oh, I'm getting quite, I'm getting a bit emotional myself here, worrying. Because I was so worried about my niece. I was so worried about my niece. Something told me, oh, oh I'm a little bit worried about this, and I was right to be so. Um, so they took her into this... Um, uh, theatre and they thought they would have to do a cesarean but they didn't and they got the f forceps and they have to push you don't mind me telling you this do you that you that i think i think they have to push the forceps inside the uh the mother and then open up a bit and then pull the baby out like and that's that's what happens about that's how i understood it from what uh, my sister told me uh and got him out and everything is fine so that's good uh, tracy did lose quite a lot of blood my niece um they thought it was gonna have to have a transfusion but it didn't happen in the end and um and that's it really uh, and she came out of the hospital though the next day you know so good and i went up to see her on thursday and went round to the living room as soon as she got home and uh, she's very, very tired and weak at the moment. Poor Tracy. And I've met uh, the little George. Little George for the first time. And it's all fantastic. And uh, his his little head, 
is long at the moment. It's like a long, like a, like a cone, almost like a cone head, you know, the cone heads. And that is because apparently they had to pull it out, pull the, the baby out by the head. Uh, I'm told that the head will return to its normal shape at some point quite soon so that's and that's why the head is a little bit long if you uh, do go and have a little look at the pictures you might think oh his little head's a little bit long and that's the reason for that because because he was round the wrong way and he had to be pulled out but um, my heart absolutely goes out to my niece it really does uh, she went through some uh, uh, something in there that perhaps uh, other mothers don't have to so Uncle Chris loves you loads and Uncle Chris loves Great nephew George, who has now been born. Lots of photos, as I say, uh, on my website, on my uh, Facebook page, Chris Reardon UK. All right. Uh, so that was nice. And uh, my sister cooked me a lovely meal, I must say, while I was up there. She did uh, corn mince with peppers and onions and things like that, which was really nice. Very similar to what I did a few days ago. I made a great big stock pot of corn chilli con carne. You know, I'm vegetarian. And uh, very, very nice indeed. A little bit of a chilli peppers. I do like it quite hot. Lots of tins of chopped tomatoes and bits and pieces in there. Uh, carrot, onions. I forgot the garlic this time. What was the other thing? Oh, and peppers. Put them all in there, mix them up. Oh. Absolutely delicious. Thank you very much. Let's have some more. And I make a big stock pot and I usually get about seven to eight meals out of that. So very, very tasty indeed. And um, what else am I going to tell you about? Oh, yes. My water meter has been installed, boys and girls. Oh, yes. The water meter. And no one told me they were coming. You know, the other afternoon, about half past 11, I think, I heard some drilling going on outside. I looked out the door and there they are drilling around. You know, I thought, oh, they must be putting in the thing, uh, you know, the little plate. What is it, Katie? Do you want more cuddles? No, no, she just wants to meow now and again. Um, so that's been done. And uh, uh, another way of saving money, boys and girls. I'm on a water meter because I explained to you in the last show the way our water uh, prices work here in the UK. If you are on, you can either be on rates, water rates, which I was on. And the way they work that out is on the size of your house. So I am very, very fortunate. I have a three bedroom house, but there's only me living here. OK, me and the cats, well, the killer cats, incidentally, the killer cats and me are the only ones who live here. Um, so really, I'm paying for three lots of water. Or, or maybe four. Maybe they include a baby as well. I don't know. A couple of kids as well. Uh, children. So I've gone on to a water meter. As well as doing that, I installed two water butts again, eventually, you know, after <laughs> after my usual DIY disasters. They are now installed and they're working properly. Two water butts. One was overflowing, I noticed, because we've had a lot of rain here last week. So I looked it up on the Internet and they said, if it's overflowing, it's likely that the water butt is too low. And I looked and yes, indeed, um, it's supposed to be the same level or almost the same level as the pipe, what comes out of the oh, out of the downpipe. So you've got a downpipe going down, and then you have to cut that and put a little pipe coming out of it into the water butt. Well, the bit coming out of the downpipe was about four inches higher than the water butt. And the water butt and the bit coming out of the downpipe has to be at the same level. So when the water butt's full up, then the rest of the water goes straight down the downpipe, but it wasn't doing it, it was overflowing. So I simply got uh, a couple of paving slabs, put, uh, uh, emptied the water butt and pushed them under the water butt to raise it up a bit. And since then, I've had more rain and that all seems to be working now. So I've got two large, I think, 250 litre water butts uh, and they are both completely full of water already with the rain that we've had. So that's quite handy. And um, one of the ways I use that water, you can use it for the garden, uh, really. But another way I use the water is to flush the toilets. Now, my mate takes the piss out of me for this. He says, you're living like they did in the Stone Age. That's what he says to me. Because what I do is, when I use the toilet, I then go out to my water butt, I, f make, I fill a bucket of water, and I pour it down the toilet. Therefore, it's not cost me anything, has it? You've got to play the game, dear. 
you got to play. I'm si absolutely si you I know you're sitting there thinking he's making that up. I tell you what, I am not making that up. I am absolutely not making it. He goes mad. He says, you're doing these things just to wind me up now, aren't you? And I'm like, no. Why pay for water if you... I've got it there sitting, sitting in two large water butts that I installed myself. Now, what is the point of doing that and then not using the water? That's just stupid. Absolutely stupid. So I do. I use the toilet and then I go out to the water butt. I have a nice big, uh, big bucket of water and I simply pour it down the toilet. It's not cost me a penny. Not cost me a penny. I'm quite pleased about that. I really am. And that's, that seems to be all working nicely. Um, although while I was at my sister's, Ronnie did come round here to feed the cats. OK. And while he was here, he made a little video of himself flushing my toilet, boys and girls, with water that I've had to pay for. Just to annoy me, he did it. He sent me a little video of him flushing the toilet. So I'm not happy about that. So, to, um, to counteract that, I have now installed water hippos. Yes, boys and girls, water hippos into my um, uh, toilet systems. And these work very simply. You order them online. They're only about two quid each. And basically, it is a plastic bag. That's all it is, a plastic bag, OK? And the idea is you put that over the ball, ball cock thing, uh, uh, upside down, and then you move it round so it's under the ball cock, and so that fills with water, all right? And the idea is your system then doesn't... That water always stays in that bag, thus making the inside of the system smaller. So you don't use so much water when you do have it coming in from the outside. Like people like Ronnie, who won't go outside and fill a bucket with water and chuck it down there like I do, dear. You've got to save this money, dear. Play them at their own game. Yes. So there we are. Another new way of saving money. I'm very good at this. I think I should open my own website. Chris Reardon saves you money. What do you reckon? Would that, would that get many hits? I'm sure it would. And while I'm saving money on my water, poor old Ronnie's had to buy a new fence. Yes, that place where he moved into, uh, the fence was absolutely rotten. Rotten it was. It was old in it and panels falling off. And he's just bought, bought uh, a new fence and that's been installed. And, and I have to say, a bloody good job as well. By let's give the people a mention. Who? What were their names? Let me think. Wokingham Fences. Wokingham is actually a little place, little uh, town where I go to use the swimming pool. Wokingham Fences, who came and did a damn good job, and so it should be for sixteen hundred pound, dear. One thousand six hundred pound to nail a few bit of woods together, you know. But it has been done properly. Just a minute. Oh, wait, have you just flushed that toilet? How dare you? He's just arrived. How long have you been there? Come here. Come here now. Come here. I've got something to show you. You're seeing that. You're seeing that. You will not flush. That toilet has already flushed once tonight. Come here now. I've got to show something to you. Say hello. Say hello. Hello. They can only see your chest. Get down. Get down. Down. Not like that. Yeah, I'll say hello. Look, at look, you may well have flushed that toilet. But one of these has been installed in that oh. now. Do you know what this is? Yeah, well, what I'll do then. Do you know what this... No! No, not that one as well! Don't do it! Don't do it! Why have you done that? Why have you done that? <sighs> do you have to do that? Yes. That costs me every time you do that. <laughs> have you seen this? Water hippos. So you put those in. And it uses, like, you could, uh, you can't have one of those because you've already got a water saving one. Oh, no, I can't wait to change that toilet so it's a normal Thank one. you. Well, I've just got a few emails to read and then we can go to Wokingham. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go and play with the cats. Sorry about that, boys and girls. Now, what was I saying? Oh, yes, you've got to play them at their own game. Save the water. Don't be like my friend and ch flush the change. Of it. I had no intention of flushing that chain today. Do you know that? No intention at all, but it's pointless having water butts installed if you're not going to in, not going to, not going to use the water, isn't it? 
I don't know. So he's had he's had his little fence. And as I say, it's a proper fence being installed. Very nice indeed. It wasn't like the pre-made wood bits that you just slot in and bang against. Oh, no. No, these, these people were really good. They've built a frame. So they put in the posts, okay? And then they put bits of wood going across. And then they, I think it's called tethered. I think it's tethered. And then they get the planks and they saw them to size and they bang them in and it looks really good. I've got to say, a damn good job. And it was very strange because they actually quoted less than the people who were going to install um, the uh, pre-made ones. Because the woman just a few doors down, she had uh, a new fence put up with these pre- And it looks, I've got to say, it looks awful. Absolutely awful. Not impressed with that at all. And it's been done really properly, so probably worth the £1,600 uh, that put it in. Uh, I thought I might have a go myself, but knowing my record for um, uh, for various DIY projects, we decided to leave that alone. Thank you very much and leave it to the proper people. So Wokingham Fences, if you're in the UK and near Berkshire, Wokingham Fences, highly recommended. I've got a cup of tea here, look. Oh, I was just being Do you nice. want that one? No, I've got one downstairs. I was just being nice. Oh, OK. Um, well, I suppose I could... Uh, hang on a minute. You That's made with rainwater. Is it really? Yes. Oh, it isn't, is it? I might try that. Well, surely if you're using that water, well, it's a bit dirty when it comes down off the roof, and it? That's the yeah. trouble. If I put bleach in it first, would that clean it up? <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Sorry about these disturbances, boys and girls. We don't usually get these here in the Mirable studio. OK, time for some emails. Uh, my email address, incidentally, if you want to join in at any time, with any money-saving ideas, perhaps, that you could give me. Any money-saving ideas we need to save in these times of austerity. And I will pass them on to all my friends in Greece and Spain. My email address is chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk by the way the main website uh, for this show if you either want to listen or watch these shows uh, you can find at www.unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. off we go then hello to millie who sent these this one in on the uh, 22nd of uh, of uh, september hi chris time for a catch up but for me, first, Millie is in Minnesota in the USA. I'll answer your question. I both watch and listen to the show, and I personally don't find it too long. In fact, I'm not concerned with the length of the show. I'm just glad you're back. I've missed you loads. We try and come. But we needed a little break at the time, Millie. It was all getting a little bit too much, but we're back now. Regular as clockwork, once a week, OK? <laughs> She says, now for the catch-up. Regular listeners and viewers of the show will know that as of the time you started your break in March, which was a while ago now, isn't it? My father, Don Turk, was fighting a battle with cancer. And I'm so sorry I have to tell everyone that on the 16th of April 2012 this year, uh, my father lost the battle. Having said that, Chris, it's very important to me uh, that you and everyone listening and watching knows that I passed on each and every message that was sent to him and each message and prayer that was sent by everyone meant the world to him. Thank you all. As for how I'm holding up through this, I still go to the cottage regularly, but I'm finding that difficult to deal with the memories, lovely as they are. The pain is very raw at times. Will it ever go away? Um, I'm afraid it won't, Millie. I don't think it will. Uh, my mum's been gone 12 years this year. And my dad, uh, 96, uh, it's 13, 14, 15, 16 years this year. And I don't think the pain ever goes away. It doesn't. You have to learn. To, you, you do. I say you have to. You do learn to live with it. Is that, and that's it. The pain is it. I can bring that pain up any time I want like that and start bawling me eyes out in front of you. But you, you kind of learn to live with it. You suppress it. I think you suppress it. You do. And um, that's, that's the best, about the best I can say, uh, I think, really. All right. Thank you, Millie. Nice to hear from you. Hello to um, Marge. Hello, Marge. Who also sends this in on the 22nd, who says, here's two pictures of our well house. Now, you remember we were talking about water uh, meters last week and I was getting ready to have mine installed. Uh, well, Marge has her own well. She's in Oklahoma. 
On the bottom right of Inside Well House, you see how it goes into the ground. She sends me a picture. It goes down 150 foot to water. That's it. We don't share it. It's just for my brother's house and myself. I live on three of the ten acres he and I share. Three acres is mine. Uh, and looking forward to this week's show. Be blessed. And she sends in a picture of um of the well in the house. And it's like... Uh, uh, it's like a, a, a tank with, with a pipe attached to it that goes down into the ground. And it's like a little little shed as well. A little shed there that um, uh, 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 where, where, the, where the tank is. And presumably some sort of pump or something like that to, to bring it up out of the ground, I guess. All right, so thanks for sending that in, Marge. Did you send me something else? Oh, you did. There we are. <clears throat> Marge also writes... Uh, the audio on your last show, oh, I haven't got that on again, have I? No, had a little echo effect once in a while. Yes, I had. I've got an echo button here and all I've got to do is push that up and you can hear echo. And it's a bit like if I put it right up, it's like Halloween. <laughs> and it, so and I, I looked over once I read that. And uh, indeed, the echo was slightly up. So sorry about that. She said it had a neat echo effect once in a while. Wasn't bad. Just sounded like you were in a huge auditorium. It wasn't really an echo, but that big room effect. It was a very small effect. Nothing to be bothered about. Sounds otherwise was great. I downloaded your video and it was huge. Over 300 meg. Took me an hour and 15 minutes to get it. I think my internet was busy or something. Wouldn't it be great that we have a TV ad blocker like we have on the internet? Kill the pop-up ads on TV. Yeah, we've started getting those now. Uh, not actually pop-up ads, but ads advertising the TV company's programme that's coming next. And it's bloody well annoying. It really is. Keeps coming across. Uh, uh, the, the worst offender seems to be Dallas. At the bottom of the screen, ten minutes before, you start getting these little ads appearing to what's coming up next. And it does annoy me. Um, she says, congratulations on your sister's weight loss. Yes, my sister's very happy about it. And when, of course, I saw her the wee, uh, a few days ago, uh, she's looking wonderful, my sister. I use the term elderly or my elders. It is how in a Native American way. I'm 53 and decided not to get old mentally. I'm going from my first childhood to my second with no in-between. People get old when they think old. <clears throat> I'm inclined to agree with you there. You're actually not much older than me. I'm going to be 50 next year as well. Um, but yes, I, I, I do think a lot of it is in your mind. Um, people often say you're still like a child, and I think I probably am, actually. Um, but I'm sure that helps you to, to, to sort of have a, a younger outlook on life all the time. March says, I've noticed uh, people of late are sort of in a hurry and not smiling a lot as when I was a kid. But I try to smile at them now anyway. People who smile at me make my day. I think it's the economy or waiting to see what president will be elected. I don't know for sure what's up. <laughs> Keep smiling. You've got to smile at people and often you'll get a smile back. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you don't get a smile back, but I just ignore it and I carry on and I smile at the next person. Yes. <laughs> So thank you very much. Um, she says she likes the show, the length of the show. Maybe more variety in what you talk about. I would like to see your house. Maybe put a camera on your bike and take us around town. That's an idea, isn't it? Could put a little camera on me or something like that. You can buy those now. Not very expensive either. The well that I showed you has a pump on it. Uh, ah, here we go. Here's more information about the well. The well that, uh, that I showed you has a pump in it. And no, it's only our well. It's 150 uh, foot to the bottom. Well, wow. and you can't actually look down into the well. It's just a holding tank above ground and the hoses that go into the ground. I will send you a picture of the well house as well, which we've seen. Chris, you had me laughing so hard in this episode. Thanks. I think I typed it wrong about um, uh, donations. Yeah, I thought she was she was suggesting that she should send a donation. I said not to. She said no. Um, although uh, uh, she says I was making a joke about how much ink you use in printing out all those emails. And it would be nice to help buy more printer ink for you. 
I knew you didn't take donations. I knew that you didn't do it to make money. No, I, I could never do it. <laughs> Apart from you, Marge, no one would send any money anyway, because it's all a load of old rubbish, isn't it? <laughs> eh? Let's be honest, this is all a load of old rubbish, what I'm doing here. <laughs> You spent almost an hour reading my last email on your show, so I'm cutting it off this time. Don't want to be the Marge and Chris show. That's all right, Marge. You make those emails as long as you want, darling. Most people, I always say that to people, you make them as long as you want. Um, hello to uh, lovely Matthew, who said, I hope you and all your listeners and viewers are doing well today. I just wanted to touch base in regards to your last show. I personally feel that the length of your last two shows, which were about an hour each, were a fantastic length. I am someone who alternates between watching and listening, and I have no trouble sitting down and taking an hour of my Saturday to take in the show. I know that you do have a very busy schedule, as most of us do, but in a perfect world, I'd honestly like to hear you five days a week, as I truly find enjoyment in taking in your shows, and I feel that I'm likely not alone in saying that. Well, that's very kind of you to say so, and uh, indeed, if you remember when we were doing the shows at the beginning of this year, um, they we did get eventually round to almost doing one a day. Um... And it was, even though the shows were shorter, uh, it was becoming rather time consuming and starting to affect other parts of what I do. So that's why uh, it suddenly came to March and I kind of had a, a, a bit of a mental block and I thought that this has got to stop. And that's why it stopped, really. It just became too much. Uh, but here we are once again. Doing, I would love to sit here and do a show a day. I absolutely would. Perhaps... <coughs> Um, perhaps at some point in the future when I retire I will be able to do that you know I will have the time what are you going to do today I'll do a show first and I'll go and do my bits and pieces and maybe maybe I will be able to do that but while I'm working um, and doing those bits and pieces uh, there really isn't the time to do it although I thought there was uh, which is why I tried to so thanks very much for that Matthew I'd love to I'd love to sit here and do a live chat show uh, every day but there we are he says, sadly, there never seems to be enough hours in a day, though, mate. So I'm grateful for any amount of time your show is on for. I wanted to bring up something that came up in the last show as well regarding Marge, uh, Marge's offer to donate to the show. Many of my friends in Canada and some of my friends in the USA have asked me over the past two years if I knew whether or not you accepted donations towards your show in which I have let them know that you don't. Um, oh, that's interesting, really. Uh, but I just wanted to assure you that uh, many people I could tell you who are behind you all the way and have always been more than willing to support this show as you've brought enjoyment to, to so many people throughout the years. And I'm here to say that it doesn't go unappreciated. So thank you, Chris, for all your time and effort and all that you have done over the past few years. As always, you are in my thoughts and prayers every day. Sincerely, Matt from Canada. So a lovely, lovely email there, uh, Matt. Um your appreciation is all that is that 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 I can accept. There's no way I could accept donations or money from anyone for doing this um uh, this particular show. It's just a bit of fun. It's just a little bit of friendly banter between myself and you, dear friends. Okay, so thanks very much for that. I do appreciate that. I do. I, do, I really do. And um, finally today, uh, one more email um, from Guillermo. Hello, sir. Guillermo, who wrote on the TV, writes on the TV series Trollid uh, that I mentioned last week, available on DVD. And he says, I was all ready to buy Trollid when I noticed that the episodes are coded only for European format, uh, which, of course, I didn't realise at the time. So, so I'm glad you didn't buy it. I'm so looking forward to seeing the show. Next month, I will be buying a multi-region player for just a reason. I mean, you know... <laughs> This whole copyright and coding DVDs, what is the point of companies coding these DVDs for either Europe or Australasia or America or wherever? What is the point in them to when you can just go out and buy a multi-region DVD? It's a bloody waste of time, isn't it? It really is. Because you can go and buy a multi-region DVD player and play it anyway. So why do they bother, eh? Why, oh, why do they bother? Isn't it stupid? 
He says, I wish I could come out there and take you to dinner as you have one of the most lovable personalities I have seen. It's a date when I come to the UK. Oh, I say. Well, have we got a date at last? You, Guillermo and me on a date. Quite like the sound of that. Bring a toothbrush. Do bring a... T <laughs> Do bring a toothbrush. Um... Guillermo wants to know, Fagash Lil, Fagash Lil, where in the world is Fagash Lil? Hope she is fine. Really would love to see your best mate, Ron. So you've seen him on the show today, okay. No need for him to be shy. Uh, he has made a couple of appearances in the show, but we, we don't, like to, don't like him to be on too often, boys and girls. You know, he would take over. I'm telling you that, he would take over. Once him and me start talking, you can't get a bloody word in edgeways once he starts to... I'm not having that, not on my show. Anyway, I'm going to finish my tea. Two cups of tea I've got here. Actually, the first one's gone a bit cold. Let's try this. Do you think he's made this with rainwater? I don't know. Don't think so. That that business with the donations, just before I go, I, I it, it, it's not... From, no, I just couldn't. I couldn't accept donations for doing this. I really couldn't. Um, oh, there's another email here. Have I read this yet? No, I haven't. Oh, we've got one more email to do. What's the time? Oh, well, we just slip, we just slot this in. I was going to say about donations. No, I just couldn't. Not from normal people. I suppose I would accept a sponsor to the show, but it, it couldn't be a person. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel comfortable taking money off a person. But a company, I don't know. I mean. And, you know, we, we've only got a, a, a couple of, a few hundred people watch or listen to this. It's, it's not in the thousands, you know. It's not even in the hundreds. Well, it's, it's in the very low hundreds. Very low hundreds, OK? Just a, just a couple of hundred people either watch or listen to this show. Um, if, if a company wanted to sponsor it, I don't know, like, um, I don't know, Microsoft or, 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 or or, or Toshiba or someone like that. that I, I, I'd happily do that, you know, if I have a logo be on me, Toshiba or or, 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 or a McDonald's symbol in the corner or something like that. I'd happily do that and keep mentioning the name of, I don't know, John Lewis. John Lewis sponsored this show. Um, I, I would do that. Yeah, I would do that, but not not from separate people, no. People have got enough, enough worries about sending a couple of quid here and there anyway. Right, one more email then, which I nearly forgot. So apologies to Craig Adams, which I nearly forgot. Hi, Craig A here. Hope you and the cats are keeping OK. I've got two cats now. One one adopted me. I still haven't shown you to you. I'll try and do that on the next show. Been kicking up, keeping up with your recent new shows on YouTube. Welcome back. Doctor Who has been good recently. I've been to a few science fiction conventions. We paid a visit to Derby, East Midlands, a few weeks ago uh, to Whoville 4, which is a lovely venue in Derby City. Uh, the venue is called Quad. Next year, we will see Doctor Who celebrate their 50th anniversary. 50 years anniversary. Same age as me, dear. At Derby, we met, met Katie Manning, who played Joe Grant in the 70s, of course, uh, from the classic John Pertwee days. Katie posed with us and had a photo with our full-size red and black Dalek, which is uh, something that Craig's got. Also, actors who we grabbed for photo poses, John Levine, who played Sergeant Benton, I remember him, uh, unit from the classic John Burt, we kindly had a photo with us. He was very nice. Peter Purvis was there, who was also in Blue Peter, I remember him, in that, and uh, a classic Doctor Who had his photo with us. Derek Martin, Charlie Slater from EastEnders and Classic Doctor Who had his photo with us and seemed very nice. We also met Louise Jameson, who there, there, who kindly had a photo with us, and she also signed a Dalek too. Louise played Leela, remember her, the cave girl with Tom Baker? She wore very, very short skirts, dear. I mean, I don't usually like that sort of thing on television, dear. We're still hiring... Uh, full-size Daleks for, at, for weddings, birthday parties, £100 per day per Dalek, and all the money for that goes to the Max Appeal, which is a UK-registered charity based in Stourbridge, uh, uh, West Midlands. Uh, have a look at the website if you want to there, boys and girls. www.maxappeal.org. 
dot uk all right once again if you want to have a look at that www.maxappeal.org.uk as a charity max appeals patron is anthony head anthony head from merlin we love merlin we love merlin little britain as the prime minister buffy the vampire slayer and doctor who so anthony head he's been a lot isn't he Recently at Castle Mead Radio, because he he's a, he does a uh, uh, Craig does a little show on Castle Mead Radio, which is a hospital radio station. Good times are at the station. I've managed to get two sponsors, which have kindly donated one hundred pounds, which will go into our voluntary charity based hospital radio station and help us out a lot. And that's per year. Simon Fisher Becker, who plays Dorian, the big blue man from series five and six of Doctor Who, I remember that. Kindly agreed to sponsor, and Simon kindly popped up to a hospital radio station a few months ago. And he was very impressed with our setup, and he was also impressed with the food department. It's only when I try and get a special guest there, we lay on food for them. Well, I, well, I hope if I ever come there, I'll get food. Or oh, we're always up for a free buffet, you know. I did a little birthday party, uh, a 40th birthday party I did. <coughs> on Saturday, and, and the buffet was wonderful. I particularly liked they, they did little cheese and tomato stuff on slices of French stick. Oh, delicious. Thank you very much. Let's have some more of those. He said, and a few weeks uh, ago, Max Appeal patron Anthony Head kindly agreed to sponsor my hospital radio show, which is called Time and Space. Anthony is yet to visit Castle Mead Radio because he's so busy with the filming, all right? And a few days ago, I've been in touch with David Graham, one of the original voices of the Daleks from the William Hartnell 1963 to 1966 era of Doctor Who. David Graham uh, also did the voice of Parker, Bra Parker Brains Gordon in Thunderbirds. You know Parker? Yes, my lady. He did that voice as well. Wow, you actually met... Did you meet him or just get in touch with him? That's fantastic. Uh, in Thunderbirds, the puppet TV series, which... What are you doing to that cat? I'm brushing her. Well, she don't like that, does she? No. She's been getting a little bit temperamental, actually. Yeah, a bit like you. Shut up. I'm nearly finished. Stop panicking. Right. Can you hear that? Would you like to brush her on TV and let's see people... Let's see how, how she hates it. He's a good bloke, who really. He's brushing the cat. Something I, I don't like doing it because they hate it. <laughs> have you got a... You'll have to get a the collar. Look. Look at, look at all this, what's come out of the cat. Look at it. Which one have you got? Is that Katie? That's Katie. Look at that. But no fleas. Notice no fleas in that. Can you see that? No fleas. It's a brush full of fur. Carry on. Get that fur out, love. <laughs> Dear me. Um... Where are we now? Created by uh, Thunderbirds. Puppet TV series created by, of course, the, the great Jerry Anderson. David has agreed to donate to our hospital radio station. I, I, I'm not just saying this, Craig. I must try and get up and see you at some point. Where is Castle? Where, where are you again? I can't remember now. You're quite a far way away, aren't you? Um, he says, you can have a look at our hospital radio station, castlemeadradio.co.uk. All right, castlemeadradio.co.uk. Uh, and you can click and listen live on that. And his show, My Time, My Space, goes out every Friday live between 5 and 6.30 uh, UK time. Come and join me. I'll keep watching your shows, Chris. Take care from uh, Craig Adams. So lovely to hear from you, Craig. All right, and good luck with those Daleks. I hope you're still making uh, lots of money for charity. Anyway, time for me to go, boys and girls. I'm going over to Wokingham now. He's going to have his hair cut, and I'm going to have some lovely pasties. We both have some lovely pasties. Uh, join me again next week. My email address, please, please, please feel free to say anything you want, OK? It's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co. Dot uk chris at united kingdom talk dot co dot uk you can also subscribe to the program uh, on youtube www.youtube.com forward slash chris reardon uk all right my username chris reardon uk same username on facebook chris reardon uk and once again the main website for this show is www.unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk thanks for watching and listening you have a good weekend see you on the next show bye bye